Okay, so let's do this question, clumsy factorial. You know factorial where factorial of say 10 gives you 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 and so on. Clumsy factorial is where you just switch up the multiplication signs with uh, multiply, divide, plus and subtract in that order. So you just keep repeating that until the end, starting from multiply. So it's just asking, you know, what, what would the clumsy factorial be of 10? would be this and the, I guess the tricky part is making sure that the order of the operations is in bod mass or like so that means you want times and divide first before plus and subtract so just taking this for example uh, that means we probably want to calculate this part first so time 10 times 9 divided by 8 and we could just add a 7 and then we actually want to so let me actually put brackets around these so I'm gonna calculate this this can be by itself. I want to calculate this part. I just want to calculate this part. All right, so if I just sum up this plus seven minus this plus three minus this and so on and so forth, then we have our answer. So, well, we could um, do four operations at a time in like a for loop. So we can consider this part here where we add to some temporary value the result of this and then add seven. And then here we could uh, subtract this plus three in one iteration we could do this in one iteration we could do this and then at the end there's like an edge case where if it's not a multiple of four number of numbers then uh, we, we have like one of, th one of these operations cut off we have a full loop signing from i equal to n i greater than zero and i minus equal to four and let's just make it a, a long long for, just for safe measure so we have ll temporary value is equal to zero Oh, let's make it equal to i for now. And then when you want to add uh, time, more times by nine, or times by the previous number, so, but that number may not exist. If i minus one is greater than zero, right, because in a, in a factorial, we, we don't consider, the number zero never pops up. So we have to make sure if this is greater than zero, then we could do temp times equals to i minus one. Similar thing with the divide. So if i minus two is greater than zero, then we could do temp divide equals to i minus two. Now, in this case here, we actually want to subtract this from the total answer. This is the only case. So we always subtract this part, but the very first one, we, we that's a plus. So what we can do is say sine is equal to one. And then from now on, sine is equal to negative. So we could do, um, answer is equal to zero, answer plus equals to the sine times the temporary value. And then we could say if i minus three is greater than zero, temp plus equals to i minus three, and then return the answer. Oh, okay, so this needs to be added to the answer, not temp. Oh, okay, there we, there we go submit that um awesome thanks for watching like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video